In my series of original stories on this channel, Multiverse Tales, there is a lot of not original stuff. I mean, my Beast Summoner character Tayrin will literally summon a Hellboy dragon to help him out, one of our core team characters has a Marvel symbiote on him, and there are multiple versions of the SCP Foundation and a whole bunch of my different universes. So for today's story and episode, since what I had planned for my character Alexis Jones was so heavily inspired by the manhwa and recently turned anime solo leveling, that I decided to literally just label this what it is, a solo leveling ripoff, but with plenty of my own twists to it. But whether you're a fan of solo leveling or have no idea what it is, I think you're gonna enjoy this story. One of the drawings in this episode is going to be an updated image of Alexis Jones in a very solo leveling inspired way, and the rest will be this month's community redraw, combining subscriber submitted demons together to make new demons, which will of course work into today's story, a story that we can get to right now. Let's go! Hit like if you want, subscribe if you feel like, but either way, Enjoy the show! Previously on Multiverse Tales, a group of powerful demons known as the Archons, who have the ability to create more demons themselves en masse, have begun an assault on the multiverse. Alexis Jones is the field leader for a team of heroes that are doing all they can to hunt down and defeat the Archons, but she is the one with the most power to stop them. By doing something that went against one of her core morals, to never kill any being with a soul, she took the life of another and gained the powers of the Reaper, on top of her already existing mineral magnetism abilities, to attract and repel rocks and minerals to and from herself. Any being slain by the Reaper's scythe will not only be instantly killed themselves, but have everything they've created since taking physical form destroyed as well. Convinced that the Archons don't have souls themselves, Alexis is determined to learn how to use her new Reaper abilities to kill these powerful demons. But her training has been slow going thus far. Until now, that is. And so, our story begins. It was six in the morning and Alexis was in the Sharp Tank Gym. She was pounding away at a specifically built punching bag, made to withstand even a full-force hurricane hammer from one of the gang's strongest members. A purple ring of clouds swirled around her and pulsed and contorted with each hit, and the three Reaper rings that had circled her head since gaining the powers of the Reaper slowly spun, keeping out of her direct eyeline. Unkillable Kate was not far away on the bench press, leering at Alexis. During a break between Alexis's hits, Kate finally called over. Just spar with me, Jones, it's been forever. Alexis didn't look over and just kept swinging. I'm not risking it. We might call you unkillable, Kate, but that doesn't actually mean you can't be killed. I still can't control this purple... stuff and when it solidifies into something dangerous. On top of that, well, Alexis didn't say it, she felt a bit weird about fighting Kate now, since Kate and Sterling had become a couple. Alexis and Sterling were practically siblings, and while Alexis and Kate had become friends, they also still butted heads sometimes and had a bit of a rocky history. Kate dropped her weights on the rack and got up to come over. If you're so scared of that stuff, then why aren't you- She paused and breathed, then continued, somewhat more calmly. Why aren't you training yourself on how to get control over it? Is it still because you're mad at yourself about how you got it? You did the right thing. If you hadn't killed the Reaper, then the Archons would have and they would have got her powers. Alexis groaned and turned to Kate. It's not that. I mean, I do still hate how I got these powers, but at this point, I, I know I can't change it. I can just do my best to do good with them. But I also have no idea what I'm doing. I've gotten this weird smoke to turn into small blades a few times in the field, but I can never tell how I did it. It's like it's totally random. Kate nodded. Well, maybe someone in the multiverse can help. Have you asked... <sighs> Dresden? If there's anyone who could teach you? Alexis crossed her arms and sneered. Yeah, I asked him. He said as far as he knows, the only person who knew how to control the Reaper's abilities was the Reaper, who's dead now because of me. Trust me, I'd love it if there was someone out there that I could just ask. How do I get control of the Reaper's powers? But as far as I know- Interrupting that thought, the rings around Alexis's head started to spin, and the purple one expanded and moved in front of her eyes. Oh, come on, what now? But her frustration quickly faded as, on the inside of the ring, in a language she wasn't sure how she could read, appeared words that she read out loud. To gain further control over your Reaper abilities, you must undergo Reaper faculty training? Would you like to begin today? Alexis tilted her head under the ring and looked at Kate. Kate shrugged. Well, you've 
got a line about that in your religion, don't you? Ask and ye shall receive or whatever? Alexis looked back at the rings and said, Uh, yes, begin now. The purple ring spun away from her eyeline and the red one moved into its place, with more writing appearing on it, that once more she read aloud. Venture to dimension Z226 to face demon army. More instructions to follow. Kate immediately turned on her own multiverse jumping wristwatch, a device Benny Sharp had made for everyone in the group, which he called a Mujwawood. Kate intended to join Alexis on this adventure, but when she dialed in that dimension, her screen went red. Hey, what gives? It's not working. Alexis tried the same on her own watch. Nothing. She glanced up at the rings again. Reaper rings, why can't we access dimension Z226? The purple ring came down in front of her again and she read its message. The Reaper can access any dimension, but it is locked to most beings. Only those who can override dimensional locks may access dimension Z226. Examples of such beings are the Reaper, the Archon Demons, and the Overseer of said dimension, who is now deceased. Alexis looked back at Kate. Sorry, Blakeur, but guess this is a solo mission. Kate rolled her eyes. Ugh, fine. Be careful, Jones. Alexis smirked uncertainly. No promises on that. Rings? How do I use you to travel to Z226? The red ring suddenly spun down and shrunk, wrapping right around her eyes. It only covered her vision for a second, but when it lifted off, she was suddenly in a field of charred and burnt grass. In the not far distance, she could see a city that looked as though it may have once been quite futuristic, but now was a smoldering mess, with creatures flying around it and beasts crawling up the buildings. A massive disk floated above the city with even more buildings on top of it, but it too was falling apart and pieces of it were dropping onto the city below, causing even more destruction. Reaper Rings, what happened here? She read the text from the purple ring again. This dimension has been visited by both the Archon Demons, Psychoperdelict, and Eldrorok. Alexis's teeth clenched. Are either of them still here? New text appeared, simply saying, Yes. As much as Alexis wanted to go right after one of the Archons, she didn't even have to ask whether or not she was ready for that yet. She knew she had to at least get control over creating the Reaper's Scythe to be any good against them. The red ring came down in front of her face again. Objective 1, fly to downtown Havenport without being struck from the sky. For assisted balance, activate ring flight enhancement? Alexis had practiced with her new flight abilities and had improved, but still struggled with them. Like other parts of her Reaper powers, they almost seemed to have a mind of their own. Okay, how do I... She suddenly shifted her tone from a question to a command. Activate Ring Flight Enhancement. The red ring suddenly split off two duplicates of itself that each flew off her head and shrunk to hover just slightly elevated off each of her wrists. On instinct, she flared her palms out and a pulse burst out of them that thrust her backwards into the air. She focused on staying airborne and glided backwards, before thrusting her hands behind her to steady herself. She nodded. Okay, okay, I get it. It's kind of like how Sterling flies. She looked ahead towards the city and flared her palms behind her again. She thrust forward and started soaring faster than she'd ever gone before. She already felt she had far more control than she ever had. But then, the without being struck from the sky element of her instruction became clearer. Some demons on the outskirts of the city had spotted her and headed her way. Some were on the ground, so she just flew up higher to avoid them, but there was a group of seven flying yellow demons, with crescent moon faces bearing expressions like a crotchety old man that just spotted kids on his lawn. Alexis realized that in her focus on the ring's instructions, she hadn't thought to prep in her usual way by attracting a bunch of rocks onto her arms to fight with, and she was too far from any to attract to her now. Uh, rings, how do I make a weapon to fight with? She read the response from the purple ring. Reaper weaponry skill not yet reliable. Mineral manifestation available? The demons were getting closer, and Alexis was starting to see that they were bigger than she thought, each at least four times her size. Uh, great, okay, how do I use mineral manifestation? The purple ring read, intuitive ability. That's not helpful, what do you mean? But she was out of time. She thrust her hands forward to slow herself to a stop, but the demons were still coming, and one was raising a massive talon to swat at her. She looked down at her hand and raised it. Strangely, she got an instinct and just went with it. 
She quickly squeezed her hand into a fist twice, and as she opened her palm the second time, materializing out of nowhere, a cluster of rocks grew into being. She activated her mineral magnetism, and suddenly had her signature stony fist ready to fight with. She darted herself forward, and as the demon's claw came at her, she swung her stony fist at it and shattered the oncoming appendage. The demon let out a groan like an old man getting up from a low chair. It swung its other claw. She ducked around it, a little more off balance with one hand being used to fight, but still managed well. She thrust her fist forward and shot the rocks off her arm into its head, smacking it out of the air and falling towards the ground. It wasn't dead, but still a good hit. Alexis thought about pulling the rocks back up onto her arm before they fell too far away, but instead clenched her hand twice again and just created a new set of rocks. Have I had access to this power the whole time? Why did you never tell me I could do stuff like this? The purple ring simply read, You never asked. Alexis looked up thinking she was ready for the next two demons approaching, but one flared its eye wide open at her, and suddenly she felt woozy. Without even noticing, she was starting to lower out of the air, then quickly started to approach the speed of a freefall. The yellow ring suddenly came in front of her. Warning, opponent used a hypnotic ailment ability. Effect will clear in four seconds. If it had been much more time than that, Alexis may have been a pancake, but she regained full composure just before hitting the ground and steadied herself. The grounded demons came at her, but she flew up above them again, back towards the ones in the sky, who were now descending on her. How do I protect myself from that happening again? Slay five demons with hypnotic abilities to acquire skill, hypnosis resistance. Avert your gaze if demons show signs of imminent mental attack. She had seen that the demon widened its eyes before its effect overtook her, so she made sure to watch out for that again. She shot back up and hammered a fist into the demon's head. She then grabbed one of its arms with her stony fist, pressed her other hand towards its stomach, then flared her palm out to fly backwards, ripping its arm off as she went. She then spun it around and shoved its own claw right through its eye. It fell towards the ground and faded into a cloud of ash before ever hitting. Alexis nodded confidently. Okay, one down, four to go. Alexis spent the next hour or so working on her task to get downtown without being grounded. She killed the next four hypno moon face demons, then let the other two remaining ones try to hypnotize her, and saw that they had limited effect. She had gained the resistance that the rings had told her about. She kept on into the city and had to fight off more flying demons, and some leaping off of buildings to try and grab her. But eventually she made it to the downtown core, and was promptly told by the rings that her task for today was completed, and further training in Z226 would commence the next day. She wanted to just keep going, but she knew with none of her friends able to get into this world, they might be worried about her. She just hoped the Archons would stick around this world so she could come back and find them when she was ready. She asked the rings to take her back to the Sharp Tank in Dimension A016, and seconds later, she was outside the main doors. She went inside and headed towards the main lounging area. A TV room with a ping pong table, video games, and a massive U-shaped couch facing the 80-inch screen. Keith and Sterling were in there chatting, and when they saw Alexis coming by, they both leapt off the couch and came over excitedly. Sterling spoke first. Alexis, please tell me that what Kate said is true. Are your rings giving you tasks and training instructions to help you level up your Reaper powers? She glanced back and forth at their overly eager faces. Yeah, why are you two so excited about it though? Keith grinned widely. Because you're totally solo leveling. Your life just became a full-blown anime. Before Alexis could ask what he was talking about, Sterling said, Okay, wait, though, it, it could be more like a reincarnated as a slime kind of situation. Do the rings talk to you, sometimes in maybe a sassy voice? Or is it more like text bubbles appear that only you can see? Uh, writing appears on the inside of the rings. I think the purple one answers questions for me, the red one seems like it gives me tasks and helps me in combat, and the yellow one warns me about potential threats. The two grinned even wider. That is so cool, and definitely more like solo leveling. It's this manhwa that I got Heath into, and if your path is anything like the guy from it, you are going to get so much more powerful than the Archons. They're gonna be nothing compared to you. I mean, if this does end up being similar to the comic or anime, I- Alexis had sort of stopped paying attention partway through that rant, as she noticed something on Sterling's face. She interrupted him. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. You know none of your anime and mango talk means anything to me, but Sterling- do you have a scar on your nose? Sterling immediately clamped his mouth shut, and Heath stifled a laugh. 
<laughs> yeah, Sterling, however did that happen? He smacked Heath's arm. It's nothing, I just took a hit on a mission last week, it's no big deal. Alexis squinted at him. Don't play dumb with me, your liquid metal would have protected you if it was a monster or villain or demon or something. How did you get that? Heath kept snickering. Maybe you should ask Kate. Sterling smacked Heath's arm again. Dude, when did you stop being trustworthy with stuff like this? Alexis's eyes may as well have burst into flames. Did Kate do that to you? Okay, okay, Alexis, don't worry. This is not a serious situation. It was an accident. Kate would never hurt me on purpose. It was just kind of an embarrassing situation that she doesn't want anyone to know about. Heath only knows about it because he saw us right when we got back. Alexis wasn't happy about not knowing. Sterling usually told her everything, but she also had a lot of other things on her mind. She let it slide for now, but when she went to sleep that night, she thought about what else Sterling had said before the scar had come up, about her maybe becoming far more powerful than the Archons. She'd seen the previous Reaper go up against the toughest members of her own team and basically trounce them all. But against all seven Archons at once, she hadn't held up very well. Hey, Rings, how much more powerful than the last Reaper can I get? The purple ring read, Previous Reaper embodiment Barissia Elik achieved approximately 16.4% of her potential skill as the Reaper before ceasing her training. Alexis sat up quickly in bed. That was only 16%? But then Alexis also remembered that that Reaper had been around for thousands of years. Rings, how long did it take her to get to that level? Previous Reaper embodiment Barissia Elik trained inconsistently for two years before suffering a mental breakdown and initiating autopilot mode. What is autopilot mode? She relinquished control of her body and retreated into her mind, so as to not see how many lives her form was forced to take under the responsibilities of the Reaper. Alexis could sort of understand that. If a being or creature from any given dimension became a threat to the wider multiverse, it was supposed to be the Reaper's job to kill that thing, or if that was not possible, kill the overseer of that dimension, which would automatically then kill every single other living being from that realm. But Alexis couldn't focus on that now. More important was the fact that she could actually become more powerful than the Archons with enough training and she was determined to progress a lot faster than the previous Reaper had. She got to sleep so she could be ready the next day to get back to Z226 and plow through whatever training the rings had for her, and to slay a whole bunch more demons. Alexis's Reaper training over the next week got more intense but was proving to help her progress quickly. Each day she was given her same flight tasks to do again, and each day she got a little bit better at it. And soon enough, her reliance on the extra rings to balance her flight was nearly gone. The most challenging demons she fought were referred to by the Reaper rings as Traumirin. They were green and black with crab-like legs, eyes on their chests and hands, a mouth that opened sideways, and a five-pronged tail with suction cups at its ends. They had the power to convert themselves temporarily into computer data, to travel through any non-totally destroyed tech left in the city, so they'd often seemingly pop up out of nowhere. On top of that, they had the power through a venom they spewed from their legs to reawaken someone's most horrific memories. So for Alexis, that was the day she killed the Reaper, along with some scattered other ones, like a time when Sterling had killed a villain of theirs and not told her about it for far too long, or a significant betrayal from her friend Diamos, or now known as Astra. The memories were awful and were distracting her from fighting, but between days of combat she talked them out with Sterling and Astra and some of her other teammates to help her keep a clear head and remember that she'd gotten past the trauma of most of those ordeals already. But even through all the difficulties, Alexis had to acknowledge within herself that she was having a blast facing these challenges and improving through them so quickly. More new abilities would keep coming to her as well. By killing 36 of the Traumirin over the course of a few days, she acquired Toxin Resistance, making the effects of any toxin lessened in her body, which the rings told her she could eventually elevate to Toxin Immunity. But her favorite skill yet was one she acquired on her eighth day of training. She was in the core downtown surrounded by Traumirin, more of the Hypno Moons, and various other demons. After using Mineral Manifestation more and more and leveling up that skill, she was recommended to try out Stoneseeker. 
The red ring duplicated once more and came down over her arm again, and she thrust her palm onto the tattered road. She could suddenly feel all of the rock and concrete of the street and sidewalk and buildings around her. A pulse shot through her hand and shattered the rocks even more, until daggers of concrete and brick burst out and hovered in the air. She then thrust her hand towards one of the targets, and all of the stones shot at it. That demon was quickly pummeled to ash, and she aimed at another, then another, and another. The rocks ripped through the air and tore through every demon she targeted, until there was only one left. One that she hadn't noticed before, flying high above all the others, with almost an angelic glow about it. Just before Alexis could aim the stones up towards it, the yellow ring flew in front of her eyes and read, Warning. Demon General Valeriant found. Engaging? Not recommended. Alexis smirked. Yeah, well, I recommend you sit back and watch me level up like crazy. She aimed the stone seekers into the sky and they all rocketed towards the Demon General. It was too far away for Alexis to tell what exactly happened, but the torrent of rocks all slammed into it and in a burst of rainbow light they all turned to dust and blew off in the wind. Then, moving so quick that Alexis could barely follow it with her eyes, the demon shot down to the street ahead, stopping, hovering inches above the ground and sending a shockwave of dirt across the streets that made Alexis stumble back. The demon had a halo of yellow light around its head, and two more floating behind it. Its body almost made it look like it was wearing a white suit, and it had three purple tentacles coming out of its back that all had toothed mouths at their ends. With an eerie grin, the demon spoke. So, you are the one who is killing my perfectly imperfect creatures. In barely a blink, the demon was suddenly a few feet in front of Alexis, hovering and staring down at her. Alexis clenched her fists twice, and two stone gauntlets manifested. She threw her hardest punch she could, but the demon's tendrils swung down and caught it. The demon then whipped around in a circle and hurled Alexis through a building. She slammed through every single wall inside and flew out onto the next street, stopping indented in the brick wall of the next building over. The yellow ring read, Warning, injuries sustained. And Alexis just groaned and said, Yeah, no kidding. She pulled herself out of the wall and hovered just off the ground, as the general flew over the building and down towards her. I wanted to make everyone perfect, but the only way to make everyone perfect now is for nobody to be perfect. Alexis rolled her eyes. Hey, Rings, should I care about what this thing is saying? The purple ring read, Unnecessary for the tasks at hand. Retreating is still recommended. Yeah, well, shutting up is still recommended too. Alexis thrust her hand to the ground and activated stone seekers once more, but this time, far fewer stones emerged from the ground, and Alexis could feel a wave of exhaustion passing over her. Still, she focused the stones towards the mouths of the demon's tendrils, hoping to take those out first. But as the seekers approached, the tendrils began to vibrate and pulse with rainbow light. As the stones hit, they once again just turned to dust. The demon burst through that cloud of dust to Alexis again and grabbed her around the neck. It's time for you to become perfectly imperfect too. The tendrils' mouths all opened wide and Alexis didn't want to stick around to see what they did. Okay, fine, maybe it is time to call it quits for today. She summoned the flight rings back onto her hands and thrust her palms forward, blasting herself back out of the demon's grip. She shot down the street, but glancing back saw that the demon was right on her tail. She was about to let the rings take her home, but she flew right past two demons descending on what looked like an adorable pink cat. Alexis flew past it and quickly asked, uh, Hey, rings, can I take an animal from this dimension back home with me? The response read, You may take any being or creature out, but you will not be able to bring them back into a locked dimension. She hadn't seen any people in her time here in this dimension, so odds were slim that its owners were still alive. Alexis darted down a few streets to loop back around. Luckily, the demons hadn't pounced on the creature yet, so Alexis scooped up the cat and finally told the rings to take her home. She was transported mid-flight and crashed through the doors of the shark tank, still holding the adorable little creature, but pretty annoyed about how her last match had gone. Alexis went back to the TV room and talked with Sterling, Kate, Heath, and Kayla about what had happened, all while holding and petting the cat. She let the others pet it too, but felt weirdly defensive about it, wanting to keep it all for herself. And the more they all talked, the more Alexis found she was just focused on Sterling's scar. Then glancing at Kate, and just picturing uncharacteristically cruel scenes of Kate attacking Sterling with a knife. Part of her knew it was unreasonable, but it was getting to a point of her practically wanting to attack Kate. 
Why wouldn't Sterling just tell her what happened? She was reaching a boiling point when Mara walked in, having a weirdly calm conversation with Dresden. That got Alexis wondering what they were doing. Was Dresden manipulating Mara somehow? He may have been a part of their team, but only because he was forced to be to atone for his past. Alexis didn't even want to look at them, but soon Mara paused what she was saying and stared at the cat in Alexis's lap. Finally, she asked, Um, Alexis, where did you get that cat? Alexis glanced up at her annoyed. I saved it from the dimension I'm training in. Mara nodded curiously. The one that's overrun with demons, right? Yeah, what's it to you? Mara kept staring at it as she said, I mean, maybe it's nothing, but is there any chance you've been feeling really paranoid or angry since you started holding it? Alexis didn't respond. Instead, she picked up the cat and held it in both hands in front of her, then asked, Reaper rings, is there anything weird about this cat I'm holding? The purple ring then read, You are not holding a cat. She immediately chucked the cat at the wall. It landed with its feet against the wall, then walked down to the ground. As it did, its body started shifting into a dark red and color-swirled thick smoke. Everyone leapt up. Alexis asked, Mara, how did you know that wasn't a cat? Well, it kind of looked pretty similar to this demon I killed with Clayton once called Decetros, but in my universe, its alternate form didn't look like this. The cat's body was still half there, but the rest of it had shifted into a humanoid liquid smoke being with a bag over its head and a noose around its neck. Alexis pulsed her hand twice and made a cluster of rocks, then shot it at the demon. They went right through its body into the wall. Mara shifted into her own demon form and swung her tail at its cat parts. The cat leapt over it and the demon launched its slimy, smoky hand and wrapped around Mara's face, blinding her. But Alexis thought she got what Mara was going for. She lunged down with two stone fists and grabbed the cat part of its body, which was still partially in physical form. Before the demon could do anything, she crushed it between her rocky hands. It burst into ash, and soon the rest of its body faded away as well. Everyone chuckled at the scene now that it was over, but one of Alexis's rings came down before her head and read, New goal acquired. Kill nine more smoke and fluid manipulation demons to gain ability Reaper Weaponry. And just like that, Alexis knew how she was going to kill the Demon General. The next day, Alexis had her Reaper Rings take her to a different area of Dimension Z226 to try and avoid the General for now, and asked the Rings to help her target the demons she needed. She found a few more of the Cat Demons, as well as some watery mist demons that she had to fill full of sand and dirt to kill. It took three days of hunting, but finally, she got all the kills she needed, and her new ability was unlocked. It was still low level and all she could make was a purple knife instead of a scythe, but it was enough. She waited one more day then returned to Havenport. Halfway through her flying practice, Valyriant appeared again. So you, so you finally, finally returned, returned to, to accept, accept my perfect imperfectification. Alexis dropped to the top of a building and activated Stone Seekers. The whole top of the tower shattered to pieces and flew towards the demon. It protected itself again, but Alexis flew right in behind the stones, and through the cloud of mist she tackled into the demon. She grabbed it by the arm, made the purple smoke swirl around her into a reaper knife, and stabbed it into the demon's chest. It shrieked in pain, but still managed to use its tentacles to knock her backwards. She hovered in the air away from it, and asked, What's going on, Reaper Rings? Why didn't I kill it? Don't Reaper weapons kill everything? The purple ring read, Weaponry level too low for one hit kill. 7 to 16 blows required to slay Demon General Valeriant. Alexis rolled her eyes but flew in at her target again. The demon was more prepared this time and used its tentacles to block her blade, but luckily stabbing those was just as effective. Even with them vibrating as they had to defend against the Seekers, the Reaper blade still easily cut through. Alexis also got to see how well her flight training had been paying off as she darted and weaved around all of the demon's attacks. She got in hit after hit after hit, and finally, with one more strike right through the demon's forehead, its body began to wither. Its last words were, Master, I failed you. You'll have to imperfect her yourself. It vanished, and all across the city, Alexis could see more demons disappearing. But soon, her attention was drawn to the sound of clapping. Oh, marvelous, simply marvelous, what a show! She whipped around and saw the TV-headed Archon Demon hovering in the air behind her. We were wondering if you were ever going to start Reaper faculty training. I mean, you used your powers accidentally a few times with success, but now you're becoming a real challenger for us! Alexis flew straight at it full speed and drove her knife right into its head. 
its eyes crossed as it looked at the blade. Oh, oh, oh yes, I tell you, that does sting a little. What a sensation. Not too much more than a tickle, though. Hey, Rings, how many stabs would it take at this level for the gal to kill me? To Alexis's shock, the Rings responded to the demon, showing her the message, it would take between three and four hundred strikes of Reaper weaponry at this skill level to kill the Archon Demon Psychoperdelict. She ripped the knife out and went for another stab, but it caught her hand and held her back with no effort. Why did the rings answer you? Oh, my dear, who do you think created the Reaper and those rings in the first place? It was one of our own little inventions from long, long ago, and me and my siblings are very excited to go up against it. Just not quite yet. Before she could even process what was happening, its entire body lit up as if it were a glitching computer, and the demon teleported a few dozen feet away, straightening its tie. You'll pose a challenge soon enough, don't you worry. Come find me in a few months, and we'll see how you handle a real fight then. She shot towards the demon once more, but it was gone before she reached it. Alexis asked, Rings, where is that Archon? Where is Psycho Perdelict? The response read, Archon Demon Psycho Perdelict is no longer in Dimension Z226. Location? Unknown. Alexis furiously created and hurled a massive cluster of stones at a nearby destroyed building, and nearly knocked the rest of it over. She then transported back home and stomped into the base, quickly finding Sterling and Kate in the main foyer. They asked what was wrong, and she furiously explained what happened, finishing the story with, I had it right in my hands, my knife was in its head and I couldn't finish it. Sterling somberly smiled and put a hand on her shoulder. I know that must be really frustrating, and I'm so sorry you had to go through that. But just think about how far you've come in the last couple weeks with these powers. You're gonna be ready to kill the Archons in no time at this rate. You're so far down the right path already. She rolled her eyes and stepped back. I know, I know, I just... I want to get it done now. It makes me so angry how smug that stupid demon was. She manifested more stones and punched them out the door to crash into the ground outside. Kate looked over at Sterling, then back at a still-fuming Alexis, and hesitantly said, Would it make you feel better or distract you or whatever if Sterling told you how I gave him that scar? Alexis's expression then shifted from furious to curious. Maybe, yeah. Kate clenched her teeth. Fine, do I have to stick around for this? Before Sterling could answer, Alexis said, Yes, if it's embarrassing for you, that'll be more funny to me and make me feel better faster. Kate crossed her arms. Sterling looked over at her. Are you sure, Kate? She nodded angrily and looked away. Alexis looked far too eager, as Sterling sighed and said, All right, well, it happened because I really wanted us to have a romantic first kiss. Oh no, the story cut off before we could hear what happened. Let's hope that doesn't become a recurring gag and you don't hear the story for like a year or something. But anyway, huge thank you to everyone who submitted for this community redraw and a specific thank you to the people who were chosen for our demon pairings. Sandra Hartley and Zach, President Obeng and Emerson Featherstone, Ven and Ethan Cicluna, The Crate Draco and Nerd Comics Inc. Who, by the way, Nerd Comics Inc. has a story and speed paint style YouTube channel as well. I'll link a recent video, you might want to check them out. And subscribe if you like what you see. Now, of course, rolling onto the prompt for the next community redraw. This is going to be one of those times where I give you a description of four different characters. You pick one of them and design what you think that character should look like. There's also going to be some reference images because the characters I'm giving you are characters that I created when I was like between 8 and 15 years old. But go more off the description. The images are just there to give you a little bit of extra inspiration. And these characters are going to be the upperclassmen for the Trismegistus Academy. That's right, I'm finally taking us there. You can submit some lore for them if you want, but I have a bunch in mind and planned already, so I can't guarantee I'll use what you write. Please make sure to thoroughly read the instructions, linked in the description, but besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote that I heard recently from Jim Quick. Once labeled when he was young, the boy with the broken brain, who's gone on to develop one of the most impressive memories on the planet, and teaches other people how to have much better memories as well, upon a whole bunch of other great lessons. And the quote from him that really stuck with me recently was, 
What if you woke up tomorrow with only the things that you showed gratitude for today? As I lay down to go to sleep at night, personally, I try to think out three things that I'm very grateful for that I have in my life. Of course, that's far from everything I have, but it is just a good practice to help remind you to be grateful for the good things, and it helps you think less about the not-so-good things. I hope that's inspiring. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Suicide Squad Dragons. I'll see you there. Goodbye.